Hello and welcome to another video on basic fiber optics. Today I'm going to explain to you what a fiber bracket grating is. So essentially a fiber bracket grating is consists of an ordinary fiber core where there is a periodic change in the refractive index. So if we look at this little chart down here, here we have the direction along the length of the fiber on the z-axis and here we have a chart of the refractive index. So there's going to be these periodic increases and decreases in the refractive index. So what's going to happen if we send, let's say, broadband light into a fiber like this? Well, essentially, if you send all of these different wavelengths into the, the fiber, then um, because of this little uh, change in refractive index, you can sort of think of each of these little changes here as a little antenna that will then, once it's excited by an electromagnetic field, it starts to radiate light in all different directions. And the combined effect of all of these um, different little antennas here being excited by the same light is that um, light with a wavelength that matches two times the average refractive index multiplied by the spacing between the increases will be reflected coherently or rather constructively in the backwards direction. So essentially you can send broadband light into a fiber back grating and then what comes out of it over here is the same broadband spectrum except the wavelengths that sort of match the grating spacing here will be dropped or more precisely they'll actually be reflected backwards. So if you send this in you can measure the transmission spectrum and you'll see the whole thing with a drop or if you measure the reflection spectrum, you'll see the essentially just the wavelength that get reflected backwards. Now, you can probably already see how this would be extremely useful in something like telecommunications or filtering. So here we have, simply have a drop filter that can remove a specific wavelength, a specific channel if you're doing telecom, um, or alternatively, if you use a circulator to extract the back reflected light, then you have a, a filter that picks out only a certain range of wavelengths you might be interested in. Another thing that's very exciting is that uh, since the wavelength we filter out depends on the spacing here, then any mechanism for changing the spacing can also be used for tuning the selected wavelength. For example, we can imagine um, stretching the grating mechanically, simply attaching a glue or something to both ends here, and then physically stretching it. So that's going to alter the, the spacing and therefore change the location of this peak we filter out. Alternatively, you could also increase the temperature of the grating, so that's also going to cause some thermal expansion. And actually, in this case, what's more important is actually the change in Effective index that happens because of the change in temperature. That's also going to shift the filter out wavelength. So this can even be used for what we call fiber optic sensing. So you can simply use the, the FBG as a thermometer because you know that a certain amount of temperature change is going to cause a certain amount of shift in the wavelength. So in other words, if you do a calibration between known temperatures and known wavelength positions, then you can install this fiber recreating in some kind of structure you might be interested in monitoring the temperature of, and then simply look at where the central wavelength is and then infer what the, what the temperature was. Another really interesting quirk about fiber rack gratings, as I mentioned, is that the, uh, the center wavelength here that gets filtered out depends on the, um, the grating spacing. But you might wonder, okay, so say we don't just filter out a single individual wavelength, it's sort of a great range of wavelengths that get filtered out. And this spectral shape here, how does that actually look? Well, it turns out that the, um, as the, just as the spacing between these increases in the refractive index determines the central wavelength. So the, um, the envelope, essentially, of this um, increase in the refractive index determines the, the bandwidth. And the way it's related is really interesting because it's a Fourier transform. So in this case, you can sort of see that if I maybe draw, let's call it the an envelope here, it sort of looks like, like this. You can see there's sort of a, a constant increase in the refractive index here. Uh, just being periodically modulated. So essentially if we take the Fourier transform of this square right here, then we get a sync function, which looks a bit like like this. It's basically sine of x over x. But what's also interesting is that if we then do a different envelope, let's suppose we do an envelope of the change in refractive index that looks like a sync function. Like so, well, then the um, the reflection spectrum we get coming out is actually going to be shaped like a square. So it's really interesting that the um, the envelope of this grating will tell you the reflection spectrum. So if you know that you have a square envelope, you're going to get a sink-shaped reflection spectrum. But on the other hand, because of this Fourier transform relation, you know that if the envelope is sink-shaped, you're going to get a perfectly square grating coming out, at least if the grating is too weak to really dramatically affect the, um, the power transmitted. All right, so 
now that we've uh, sort of understand the theory, let's actually see how to use an FPG in practice. Okay, I've set up a little experiment here with a fiber bracket grading, and we're going to conduct it in three steps. So in step number one, we're first going to just send EDFA light into the optical spectrum analyzer. Um, apart from being used as an amplifier, an EDFA can also be used as a broadband source that emits light at a lot of different uh, wavelengths, which can be quite, uh, quite useful. So we're first going to see just the raw spectrum coming out of the uh, EDFA. Then we're going to plug the EDFA into a circulator that is attached to an FPG here at port number two. And then the transmission of that FPG is going to go into the optical spectrum analyzer right here. Then we can, uh, we can see this uh, drop effect where we have a broadband light coming in, and then there's a particular wavelength that gets thrown away. Finally, we're going to send the EDFA light into the circulator onto the FPG, and then use the circulator to measure the reflected light. Then we should see just a single spike coming out at the same wavelength that we saw here for the, for the drop. All right, so let's see that in action. Now, I set up the experiment right here. It's going to look a little bit messy. Um, when you actually do fiber optic experiments, you're going to use an, a proper optical table. Here I'm just being a bit lazy because it's quite a simple simple test. So we have the EDFA, and it's just plugged directly into the OS at the moment. So let's see how that looks. So we get this nice uh, characteristic EDFA spectrum around 1550 that we're used to. Okay, so that's part number one. Let's actually plug the EDFA into the circulator and the FPG. So I'm going to go to trace here and then fix the A trace. Go to B, display it, write it, and get it to sweep repeatedly. All right, so if I do this, then I should also turn the EDFA off and then take the EDFA output and then plug it into port number one of the circulator. And again, this is a terribly messy setup, and I don't recommend that you do it this way when you actually conduct fiber optic experiment. So do as I say, not as I do. See, this goes into port number one, and I've already pre-connected the fiber bracket grating to port number two, so all we have to do is simply find its output, that should be this one right here, and then plug that into the optical spectrum analyzer. There we go, and now we can turn this on and see what happens. I'm not on the screen here, I'll get this fiber out of the way, it's a bit confusing. So now you can see there's a dip in the spectrum here, and if we zoom in on this a bit, let's see, yeah, there we go. So let me reduce the span a little bit more. Yes, there we go. So now we can see this drop effect where this particular range of wavelengths has decreased in power, even though it's perfectly uniform otherwise. So let's see how big that drop actually is. Now, each of these increments here is 10 decibels, so this is like uh, 10, 15, this is maybe a 15 decibel drop or something we have. Okay, so now let's pick the third configuration where we are looking at the reflection spectrum. So let me go to trace. Oh, because it has to calibrate for a second. Let me fix this. Go to trace C, write it and display it, and activate the sweeping. There we go. So right now it's still hooked up to the transmission, but let's try to do the reflection. So now we're going to uh, simply disconnect the transmission of the grading. So, and now we're going to take the third part of the circulator, which contains the reflected light from the FPG, and hook that up to the spectrum analyzer, like so. And let's turn this back on. And there we go. So now you can clearly see this um, this reflection reflection spectrum here. Oh, sorry, I forgot to move the camera. <laughs> there we go. So now you can clearly see the green trace here. That's the reflection spectrum. And I think if I grab this fiber bracket grating here and I just hold it in my hand. We should be able to see this shift ever so slightly. Let's see, can I do that? Hmm. I guess this might actually be temperature stabilized with this um, metal enclosure it has. I'm not sure if you can really see it shifting. No, maybe I'll try with another fiber break rating just so you can actually see that in effect. So just give me a moment. Okay, I just grabbed a different grading from somewhere in our laboratory, and as you can see, it's at a slightly different central wavelength. Now observe what happens if I put my hand on top of the grating. As you can see, it's going to shift slightly towards longer wavelengths, and I'm going to remove my hand, and you'll see that it shifts to the, the left. Just in case you think I'm cheating, you can see my hand right here, the grating's inside of this little box. What I'm going to do is just place my hand inside, and you'll be able to see it move a little bit to the right, like so. Okay, so you can see how this could actually be used for 
sensing or for making a tunable filter. Now, um, fiber rack gratings of this kind here are quite simple, but you can also have more sophisticated structures. So I mentioned that we can have um, this relationship between the sort of the um, reflection spectrum and the arrangement of these um, changes in the refractive index. But you notice in this case, we just have a uniform spacing between the, um, the increases, but it's actually possible to make what's called a chirped grating. So that'll be a case where you have a very close spacing between the first two, and then a slightly larger spacing, and 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 so on and so forth. So it's sort of, um, it's very tight here and very loose over here. And the reason why that's called chirped is that the, if you send light onto the, the grating, then wavelengths that match the very close spacing, which would be very blue wavelengths, will, reflected, will get reflected off of the, the initial part of the, the grating in the front part, whereas longer wavelengths, more red wavelengths, will be reflected off of the back part. So that's like another type of structure you can do, use, and it's actually used for what's called chirp pulse amplification, which um, was something that Donna Strickland got a Nobel Prize for. Another sort of interesting trick you can do is to create what's called a pie shifter grading. Essentially what you do is you have a, a grading structure like this that's periodic and uniform, but then you actually remove one of the increases here, so it's just sort of a, a hole. And essentially what this does is that it creates a, um, a, essentially a transmission spectrum where there's like a single spike that gets transmitted. That's really useful for creating um, very narrow band filters that are static. Okay, so I hope that's a good introduction to fiber back ratings. Stay tuned for more videos.